This program is brought to you by the Stanford Humanities Center. For more information, please visit us at shc.stanford.edu. Palladio is an, it's an analytic tool for looking at historical data across time and space. I tend to think of it as a historical viewfinder. Palladio is a, a web-based platform that we produced to allow researchers to visualize their data as part of the research process. We call Palladio a research tool designed specifically for humanistic inquiry. Palladio is a project in which there is a great uh, interplay between designers, developers, and scholars. The whole tool um, has, built, has been built to actually accommodate the way humanities work or could work with data and technology. What can you do with Palladio? Here on the web, initial web page, you realize the different possibilities. Uh, you create or, uh, your projects by uploading, and there are different ways of uploading your data. And then you can have a, a view that can be a map view, or you can have a list view of your data, a gallery view, filter your data either in a timeline or a time span, or use a facet filter, and at the end, save and export. The big challenge is precisely thinking about new tools which are able to integrate these two aspects. So data-driven insights versus uh, human experience, human knowledge. Palladio was the, one of the byproducts of doing Mapping the Republic of Letters. Mapping the Republic of Letters is a project that is trying to look at scholarly intellectual networks um, in the early modern period, roughly from 1500 to 1800. After we'd experimented with a lot of different ways of visualizing the data from mapping the Republic of Letters, we began to think, what are the most useful visualizations and how could we put them more or less in one program that might share enough features that it would be useful not only for all of our projects, but could be shared with other scholars. When we go to correspondence, you know, to study an especially important figure, you know, like Voltaire or Franklin or Galileo, you know, a character, we're, we're, we're going to study um, them. You know, they are the protagonist of the story. In a project like this, we've actually reversed that. Virtually every correspondence we've looked at has proven to us that there are a lot of really important people in the network that we have just ignored, that we just simply don't know because, in retrospect, they weren't famous. The Galileo Project is trying to apply digital humanities tools and perspectives to the letters written by Galileo, letters written to him and by him. Galileo leads a rich and interesting life that's, you know, full of discovery, it's full of difficulty, it's full of ideas, and yes, it's full of lots and lots of letters. It occurred to us that it would be really interesting to do a map of Galileo's correspondence, not only to see the patterns in what survived, but perhaps as an analytic tool to talk about what hasn't survived. We started the Galileo project with a, a, a database of Galileo's letters that one of Paula's undergraduate assistants had compiled for us. We built a database that initially was just a database of what's called the metadata of the letters, right? In other words, the who, where, when, you know, the basic things you can put into, yes, an Excel spreadsheet is as simple as that. Then we began to kind of correlate it in a way that would be useful in the program that became Palladio. In fact, the Galileo project became the beta test for Palladio. What this material shows very clearly is that many of Galileo's important disciples find their way to Rome after the trial, so that he actually has a new Roman network, which is quite different than his old one. I think our most exciting discovery on the Galileo project has been that he was writing in code to conceal and mask his correspondence during a very uh, intense period of his life during the second trial. Now that we've started reading for those kinds of questions, we keep seeing more and more about it, but it's things that people haven't known about Galileo before. With the Grand Tour project here at Sanford by Giovanna Cesarani, we are starting from a book, a real object, an uh, analog object, a dictionary made many years ago. This is a dictionary of 
British and Irish travellers to Italy in the 18th century, which contains entries for more than 5,000 individuals. It's uh, one moment when you still detect how crucial classics was. Ironically, uh, the Grand Tour is also the origins of mass tourism. What Palladio provided was the opportunity to create a natural graph in which you have the possibility to use two different kind of nodes and so what you see is a network in which you can connect places and um, institutions, organizations or other categories and see if patterns or clusters emerge from that. For example, a question like who was in Pisa in 1756 becomes a very easy one to uh, answer. To know which traveller would, British traveller would be in the same place at the same time, uh, if in the absence of a distinct record of conversations that did happen, allows you to speculate human, about human connections, human interactions. Another exciting aspect of this, I think, is that the students who began as research assistants on this project have developed also their own projects have, and now come to what is by now a lab. The tools evolved as we figured out better what kinds of questions we want to ask of this material. It's not that all the answers are going to be there, but as an enhancement to more qualitative and textual approaches to the same material, I think it's been invaluable.